Um, yes, so welcome to Selenium Conf. Um, it's uh, great to be back here in India. Um, this is a photo from the last, the first Selenium conference we had here in Bangalore um, with a bunch of people. Naresh is looking particularly happy there because this was at the very end and he could relax. Um, so yes, we've got Julian back as well. It's gonna be um, a lot of fun. Like Naresh said, I am going to attempt to keep to time today. Um, Last time I was here wasn't my finest moment up on stage. Um, but hey, these things happen, and it's going to be an awful lot of fun, um, I think. Yes? OK. Are we all excited to be here, by the way? I mean, it's fine if you're not, so long as you've paid for your ticket. OK, so um, some history on the Selenium project. Um, Many, many moons ago, almost 11 years ago now, Jason Huggins was working on the time and expenses app um, at ThoughtWorks. Now, ThoughtWorks is an IT consultancy. What they need is they need their consultants to um, book their time and say, I was spending this many hours on this project, this many hours on this project, and I spent you know, a million pounds on donuts or whatever it is that you need. The problem is that thought workers are also iconoclasts. They like to do things in their own way. And when they were told that they had to use Internet Explorer to put in their time and expenses, of course they did. There was this new and trendy web browser called Firefox, uh, and some people used that, and some people uh, wanted something that adhered to standards, and they used Opera. So Jason would be using this brand new JavaScript thing to allow people to do fancy interactions. And he'd get it working in Internet Explorer, and various members of ThoughtWorks would sort of come back and complain and go, like, it's broken in Firefox. And so we'd fix it in Firefox, and then far more people would go, it's broken in Internet Explorer. So we'd fix it in both Firefox and Internet Explorer, and then the one person using Opera would complain about how awful it was. And he was going, he was looking for a way of solving this problem, of constantly having a web app break whenever he could have made any changes. Um, and it was ThoughtWorks. He was doing this as like the member of the IT team that was working on it. There wasn't time or the ability to get people who worked in QA and testing to help him. So he needed to come up with something himself. And he saw Ward Cunningham's work on FIT, Functional Integration Testing. Now, if you're not familiar with FIT, and to be fair, I don't think many people are, um, it's basically a set of tables. And in one column, you have um, an action or, or something you want to check. In the next column or columns, you have the values you want to do. And then in the final column, um, you have the result that you want to compare to. And Jason saw this, completely misunderstood it, and assumed that rather than doing high-level actions, you wanted individual interactions with a web browser. Um, and thus, the first version of Selenium was born. Now, this was an internal tool, um, but he liked it. He was a big fan of open source. Um, and he went to Paul Hammond and Brett Petticord and uh, <coughs> asked whether he could open source it. And they went, yeah, all right, thanks. Um, so they open sourced it. Um, and that was the original Selenium version. Now, the problem with the initial Selenium version that everyone had is that it was all based on Okay. Um, do any of you write HTML tables for a For those of you watching at home, um, that's about a third of the room that put their hands up uh, for coding and apps of the you know what to put their hands up. And there's a number of reasons for that. The first one, is that HTML tables are a rubbish way of expressing how a number of functions work. There's no opportunity to scratch them, it's hard to use, you can do backlinks to them, for example, checking what you get now. And so um, that isn't what happened. Um, Selenium RC, the remote control, was built. And Selenium RC was designed to solve that problem, which allowed to let users write code in the language of It was going to be great. So Selenium RC came out. And uh, shortly after Selenium RC came out, I was working um, in Australia. And uh, we were using HTTP, which was a sort of pure Java version of a web browser. Um, and it ran entirely in memory. It was 
take this, and that's fine because you know nine ten years ago the way we single take that was called the Great British Council of Practice. We didn't need JavaScript to do the Great British Council of Practice. And myself and a colleague, Michael Collar, we were talking about this, and he was going, you know what? Gatekeeping violates every single uh, rule of JavaScript orientation. Uh, yeah, but it works. But put the answer. And so over the next few projects that I was doing, I started attempting to follow the advice that Michael gave me, um, and started putting sort of object oriented skin around the great work of the project. And that skin ended up with two classes that were sort of suited to it. The first one was called Weather Light, the second one was called Browser. Turns out, I returned from Australia to London, and while I was there, I was working on a project with Joe Walls. Joe Walls had been going through a very, very similar process where uh, he had been attempting to put an object oriented skin on web pages, and he had two key features. The first one was called Element, Rubber, and Web Driver, which is an amazing one, I thought, after a couple of years at the time. So when we rolled off that project, I had a chat with, with Joe, so if you mind showing some of those projects, let me know. Um, and I did a few months of implementation. And on the 3rd of January, 2007, sitting on the sofa, I put the first of the table. And I was thinking, this will be done in a year, if I'm really unlucky, two years. Um, it's now nine years in 2017, it's going to be 10. It's got plenty of people that have I was expecting it to be just a sort of little toy project for people to use, and now there's a conference in the past that I know quite a number of people about. And thank you for that. <laughs> On the way, we've done some interesting bits and pieces. We've refined the interfaces. If you go back to the initial version, it looks similar but not exactly the same as what we have right now. Um, and you know, time's gone on. We added the support classes. The support classes were originally designed to show people the kind of things you could use with Celebra, with Web Driver, with Celebra, with the Avengers. Uh, and it kind of metastasized into a sort of key part of the project that everyone relies on. And if you've used it in a specific way, that was written as an example of how you could use the notes in a Web Driver that you were expecting to do um, and stuff around. So Christmas, in a slight change of pace. Uh, according to the songs, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, you know, if you go back to the original meaning of Christmas, it was all around, you know, the birth of Jesus and, and, and things like that. If you look at the meaning right now, it's all about giving presents um, and uh, massive cons uh, consumption of all sorts of things, from, from money when you buy people gifts to far too much food where you sit replete on the sofa having eaten probably your own body weight in food um, while someone offers you more food. It's a, it's a fantastic thing. Um, it's an opportunity to get together with family, um, get to spend some time with people. Um, you know, the, and the original meaning of Christmas is, is still there, I think, from time to time. Um, but uh, you may be asking, like, why talk about Christmas? In the middle of the year in India, um, it seems like a not terribly obvious thing to do. Um, and I went back through some of my old slides and um, had a look at presentations I'd done. And I believe it was in 2013 when uh, I originally stood on a stage and went, you know what, we're going to have Selenium 3 done by Christmas. Now. I've watched the video, I don't think I say which year that Christmas was in. But sometime during this conference, it's actually going to be the Selenium Christmas. We're going to ship the Selenium 3 beta. Which I think is going to be good fun. Um, there's still a couple of changes that need to land. Um, but we are on track, and uh, it's going to be held together with hope and 
uh, good luck and probably sticky tape and a certain amount of profanity from Luke and myself as we try and iron out these final uh, wrinkles. This is Trinivas, by the way. He's sort of doing the diagrams and uh, comments and making sure that it's all going to be recorded for posterity. Yep. Excellent. Give him a round of applause. This is going to be hard work. Um, so, Selenium 3, what, 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 what's in it? Um, how many of you are using the web driver interfaces and APIs? Okay, you're going to love this because they're still there. If, if you've been following the advice of the project that we've been giving for about five years now, um, Selenium 3 is just going to be a drop-in replacement for you. You'll just be able to upgrade the jars, upgrade the link from 2.53 um, to 3.0 beta 1 if you're feeling brave, and then file bugs and tell us that it's all working great. The web driver stuff, exactly the same. Um, how many of you use Selenium RC? Okay. It might be a little bumpier. We'll cover that in a bit. Um, the reason for that is that how many of you use like the HTML table thing? Good. Almost nobody. Um, Selenium Core, the major change, the reason why we're bumping the version number is we're ripping out Selenium Core. I'll, if you're not familiar with what Core is, I'll, I'll cover that later. Um, but one of the important things is, although we've pulled it out, your tests will still continue to run. We've got, um, emu we're emulating as much of it as we need to, um, and we have a test runner for the uh, HTML table. Do you think I put the wrong font size in there? Never mind. Um, so your web driver tests. If you switch from Selenium 2 to Selenium 3, your web driver tests will continue to work. Um, the underlying classes haven't been modified. The interfaces haven't been modified. The uh, implementations haven't been modified. Um, it will continue to work exactly as it has been doing for the past nine years. Um, it's going to be good. Uh, if you use Selenium Grid, there are folks who use Selenium Grid here, right? Okay. Selenium Grid, if you're not familiar with it, is a mechanism for allowing you to run tests in parallel on a, a fleet of machines. Um, and that will also continue to work. Um, that's quite an important thing. So if you've been following the advice of the project, if you've been following uh, what we've been saying, if you've been using the web driver interfaces and APIs, you're going to be just fine. Selenium RC, there are a handful of people who still use it. Um, my advice, really, really, honestly, truly, now is the time to stop using it. I would have said nine years ago was the time to stop using it, but maybe five years ago when we really Selenium 2 would have been a great time to, to, to start making that move. Um, the APIs, the Selenium RC client side thing, they're still there. So your test will continue to which is probably a huge step forward. But well, I've been on projects where they've done things far So no, the, the code will continue to compile. The only difference is that instead of the use of Selenium scripts, the old Selenium scripts version, um, what we have is we have a web driver package. Um, so rather than being based on the original Selenium, um, we will um, instead have a back to the So everything is now sitting across the web driver. Now, this means that there's going to be some subtle differences between what you are running now in Selenium 2 and what you will be running in Selenium 3. Um, so as part of your update strategy, just pull in the new jars, run your tests, and figure out what's going on. There's probably going to be a couple of systemic issues. We've done our best to debug the bugs that happen with There's always something to say, not quite the way you plan. So, your existing investment in your RC stuff will continue to work, but you're going to have to do a little bit of a that. It would be easier if you migrated to WebDriver. If you've never tried the migration from Selenium RC to WebDriver APIs, it's daunting, but it's possible and it's good. 
and Jason made a full length of the bus and he played a really good full length of the Google and literally came to the end of the day. So I'm going to come from that side and that is where we do it. Not our So I've been talking about Selenium for a certain amount of the presentation. Um, you may be curious to know what it is. Um, I know that some of you have been looking at this project. So going back, Jason Huggins wrote this sort of version of Selenium JavaScript, right? And it was running inside the browser and it's open source code. Um, and then Selenium RC talks to basically the same kind of code, right? Um, Selenium 4 is that sort of neat, of that, that massive ball of JavaScript that's sort of sitting there in the middle of the landscape. Um, and it runs in the browser. And it runs in the browser because, hey, shit, that's the only place where it should be at the time. And because it's written in JavaScript, when the new browser comes out, chances are it's going to be in there. Right? Um, you know, the reason why Selenium is never sort of so many words as well as you get go, because JavaScript runs everywhere. I mean, it runs quirkily everywhere, but it runs everywhere. Um, how many of you have the opportunity to maintain a modern JavaScript application? Just a handful of people. Um, how many of you have worked on a code base that's 10 years old? A few more people. Um, code bases that, te that are 10 years old, despite the best intentions of everyone who's involved, tend to get a little bit crusty around the edges. It tends to be like somebody goes, I just need a quick hack. And then they put a to-do list and fix it. Normally like 20, 30 fix lists. Selenium 1 came out, and indeed from Selenium 2 came out, and it ripped JavaScript applications to run on it. And nowadays, you know, people talk about single page apps, they talk about, um, you know, uh, people have even stopped talking about Ajax in the same way that people have stopped talking about DHTML. DHTML? Dynamic HTML? HTML is JavaScript. Showing my age here, aren't I? Luke is saying he used to do that. So sorry. It's okay. Um, so, yes, the, the web has evolved. And the problem is JavaScript is fantastic, provided you won't, don't want to do anything sophisticated. Like the interactions that people do with a modern web application are incredibly complicated. When I was working on um, Google Wave years and years ago, there was a thing where you would be able to drag from the desktop into the application, but also from the app onto the desktop, and it would have two-way communication. And there was no way to test that in pure JavaScript. Drag and drop. If you've ever read the sequence of events that it gets fired, it's hideously confusing and very, very complicated. Um, worse, when you simulate an event inside JavaScript, if you go like, hey, I'm going to fire off all the events, I'm going to call quick, I'm going to do all the things I'm meant to do, um, the browsers go like, this event has been generated by the DOM, it's been generated by um, something that could be a malicious script on the page, so we're not going to trust it. And it sometimes goes down a different code path which means that emulating user input is incredibly difficult. Um, all that means is that a pure JavaScript implementation of the API is unwise in the modern age. It's not scalable. It will continue to fail in new and interesting and novel ways. And those ways are going to be incredibly hard to fix if they are fixable at all. And because of that, we need to take out the Selenium core implementation because effectively it's making a broken promise to our users. I promises it works, and it's broken because it doesn't in many, many cases that we care about. But people have tests. 
Um, if you use the Selenium IDE and you export a table, um, you are effectively using Selenium Core. Um, those HTML tables are the original uh, grammar that Selenium used in order to do its work. Um, and you probably want to keep those tests. Um, only a few years ago, somebody was talking about how they had a million core tests running, and that's how they scaled it. Which is alarming, because we've just ripped out the thing that sits on top of. Um, fortunately, it's code. It's Turing complete. You can do anything you want. Um, and we have been working on a new runner so that you can just drop this uh, Selenium free um, beta into your Selenium free. Um, if you add what we refer to as the legrc package, leg two. All right. I think I think there's only a handful of people who find that as funny as I do, but that's okay because I get to make it. Um, so the legrc package contains um, the old uh, Selenium classes, basically. Um, if you drop that on there, you'll get the new core runner. You'll be able to run it using the same flags that you used to be able to. Um, and that will allow your existing Selenium core test to run. Now, this is the one that's going to cause the most problem. And the reason why it's going to cause the most problem is because the underlying technology is no longer present. We emulate it as best we can. But it's an emulation. It's not perfect. Um, there are going to be bugs. There are going to be problems. Um, let us know what they are. We think we've got a couple. We we think we've got most of the use cases covered off. Um, there is one, which is if you use JavaScript extensions, then you're going to end up with some undefined, undefined behavior. Um, so if you're a super sophisticated user of Selenium IDE and you're using like all the all the bells and whistles, you're going to find this the hardest of the lot. Um, at that point, it might be easier to export your tests either as RC or hey, let's bring the modern world web driver. Um, and uh, do some work on your machine and make that. Make sense? Sound OK? Good, excellent. Um, lots of my slides don't have pictures, uh, don't have words. They just have pictures. Um, there's lots of words coming up. I apologize. But if you're going to take a screenshot of anything and just go like, hey, look, this is what I need to know, this is what you need to know. Um, with the language bindings, Python, Ruby, um, you'll just be able to download them, pip install, easy install, um, bundler install, gem install, whatever it is that happens to be trendy today. Node.js install, npm install, Perl, CPAN, what else is there? Maven. Maven, Nougat, um, you name it. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about the Java stuff. Um, because that's where most of the action is happening. Most of the client languages, actually, it's even simpler than that. So in Java, there'll be Selenium Java for Selenium 3. That will contain just the web driver classes and the support libraries and stuff like that. So nothing that depends on um, RC or core at all. If you drop that in and you don't update any of your dependencies, suddenly any code that uses um, code from com.thoughtworks.selenium um, all those original Selenium packages will no longer compile. And I'm okay with that because we're might moving away. Um, there is a separate standalone server, the Selenium free server. That's lightweight. Uh, lightweight. It's been reworked. Um, it sits on top of an um, updated version of the libraries that we use. Uh, it's command line compatible. So if you have build scripts which are incredibly complicated and no longer maintained by anyone who works at your company, anyone have those? No, all of you have people looking after your build scripts and know exactly how they work. I am impressed. I have never seen that. That's amazing. OK, so this doesn't matter to you. Um, but it's pin compatible. You can drop it in. It will continue to work. Um, and then there is the, the amusingly named Lego, uh, amusingly named C package. Um, this is a new dependency that you can pull in. Um, it will give you the old Selenium client side classes. Selenium, default Selenium, um, the, the old weight classes that used to exist before we had the ones in the support package, um, bits and pieces like that. It has the new HTML table, the so-called Selenium core runner, um, sitting inside of it. If you add that, then the minus HTML suite um, flag for the Selenium free server will suddenly become active. And you can run your tests exactly as you used to without needing to change anything. Um, it's all, this also contains the WebDriver back Selenium. 
So we haven't got the old server side. We haven't got Selenium 4. And what we do now is when we want to run things, we just use the web driver bag Selenium, uh, which is, like Java gets a bad, bad rep for like complicated names, but I think it's pretty clear that web driver bag Selenium is an implementation of the Selenium interface backed by web driver. Um, like I say, we've tried to debug compatible. We're probably pretty close. Um, and then the final thing that you have in there is a remote endpoint for the SE3 server. So if you start up the new Selenium 3 server and it detects you've got legacy on the, on the fast path, it will automatically set up the old Selenium server endpoints so that your client tests don't need to be updated. They can continue using the old APIs, the old HTTP endpoints, and that will work exactly as we expect it will. And the reason why we did that is to make it easy for people who work in a mixed environment. So you've got Python or Ruby or C Sharp, um, where there isn't a complete web driver back Selenium, to continue to have their existing tests work. Like this is really important to us, right? Your tests are the thing that you've made a huge investment in. They're the reason why you're using Selenium rather than some other tool. We have absolutely no intention of making you throw that investment away. That's super important to us. Um, and so we put a lot of effort into trying to make sure we're back with compatible, even as we move to push it forward. Um, do come along to the bug bash that Julian is hosting at the end of the conference um, to try out the beta um, and let us know where the problems are, where the rough edges are. Um, it's also why we're doing a beta, because we want to go, we think this is pretty solid, but we want to be sure. Um, and the feedback is, is important. So those are most of the key things you need to know. There's one other key thing you need to know. That is, there is no Selenium core. It has gone away. I mean, we emulate it. We do our best. Um, your tests should continue to run no matter what format, whichever API they use. Um, but there is now no Selenium core. Um, audience participation. How engaged and energetic are you all? All right, before we do this, everyone stand up. Take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, are you ready? Because what I'm going to ask you to do is just repeat after me. Thank you. Selenium Core is no more. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you. Like, if there's one thing you take away from this talk, I think I've made it clear I think I've made it clear, but I just want you to take this away that Selenium Core doesn't exist anymore. Um, nada, yet, nothing. Um, it's gone. If it hadn't been nailed to the perch, it would be pushing up the daisies, um, CERN, and so forth. It's gone to join the choir and do the bush. Um, it, it doesn't exist anymore. It is defunct, gone, um, taken away, no longer present. Okay, are there any questions about that? Okay, just in case, I have prepared a quick FAQ. FAQ, frequently asked questions. Does Selenium 3 and the new updates impact Selenium Grid? Answer? No. Good. Um, what about Selenium Core? Is, is that still there? No, it's gone. I beg your pardon? Selenium Core is no more. Good. You see, the, the brainwashing works. Um, is it really gone? Yes, it really is gone. It isn't there anymore. We took the, I actually deleted the code. With, with relish. It was so much fun. And then I went through the Java code and I did the same thing. And then I spent the next week fixing things. Um, it's gone. It really has. I mean, it's emulated with a test runner. Um, the RC uh, APIs are present in the LegRC package, um, and there's a web driver backed implementation for that. There, if you're using the table stuff, there's a new runner for that. Um, that functions. Um, I think that's the last thing I'm going to say about it. Your existing test will continue to work. The technology on which those tests were written has changed and migrated, um, but your test will continue to work. OK, good. So Selenium 3, the beta, coming during this conference as soon as Luke and I manage to sit down and make the magic happen 
by swearing at our computers furiously. Because that's how software development happens, right? Coffee, pizza, and profanity get changed into code, um, and then things get shipped, and everyone goes like, yep, that appears to, there's a bug. Ah, years and years ago, I used to be a fan of a thing called defect-driven development. Have you heard of this? Defect-driven development is where you release some software, you go like, it's done, it's perfect. And of course it's not, because the, the bug reports come in, right? And it's like, you said I had a website. It's like, yep. It's like, what's the URL? It's like, it needs to be hosted somewhere? So you, you host it somewhere, and they go like, but I can't log in. You go like, you, you need to log in as well? And so you do the login flow. And then people go like, I can't add things to a shopping cart. A shopping cart? Um, and so your entire development process is driven by bug reports. Um, that's, that's defect driven development. In fact, in the early days of WebDriver, that's exactly what I did. Like I took, took out the ability to execute arbitrary chunks of JavaScript, and then I waited until people came up with enough use cases where I had to cave in and go like, yeah, I'll put it back. Um, but it forced us to do really good emulation of user in inputs um, and have a nice clean API. So defect driven development, not recommended. It's a terrible idea, don't, don't do it. So Selenium 3 Beta is coming out. Um, there are other things that happen in the world um, outside of, of the beta. Um, uh, just a bit of time to cover those. First things first. Years ago, a long, long time ago, continents far, far away. Um, Opera. Actually, Opera Software were the guys that first suggested that we take the Selenium open source project and we turn it into a standard uh, with the W3C. The W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, they're the people who host uh, many of the specs and standards that we rely on day to day. Um, notably, HTML, um, up to HTML5, and then you can, you can split. Um, HTML5, um, CSS, XML is under their ideas as well. Like every single good idea and bad idea. Um, the specs tend to be hosted by the W3C if it's anywhere. We have been working for an unconscionable amount of time on our web driver specification. If you go to w3c.org, um, slash PR slash web driver, you'll see the latest version of the web driver specification. It is large. Um, it largely um, covers the uh, wire protocol that's used to communicate between the two ends, between your test running here and your servers running here, um, and, and making that all happen. Um, but it also defines the behavior we expect when we execute a command. That W3C specification has been grinding on. Um, we recently got permission to extend the um, charter of the working group for a little bit longer. We really, 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 really want it to be finished because nobody likes to work on something that is anything, right? Um, so we are working on level one. Um, we hoped that we would get it done by the summer holidays. We obviously haven't. Um, Arbitrarily, I'm going to pick Easter as the time it will be complete, but I'm not saying which year. Um, so the web driver specification is happening. Um, it's grinding forward. It's getting longer and longer. There is a face face meeting in July. I think that will be where we sort of come up with the final set of issues um, and push forward like bits of the spec that for a long time have had here be dragons. We're not quite sure what's going on. Are being fleshed out. I beg your pardon? Actions, yes. Emulating user actions turns out to be incredibly difficult. As it turns out, it's figuring out whether something's visible. Like, you know, get text on elements. It should be easy, right? You just, well, whatever, whatever happens to the display. Browsers don't know what text they're showing to users. I have no idea how this stuff works, and apparently the browser vendors don't either. Like, by the time you've gone through HTML, CSS, the styling, um, random things on the display driver, like what you see painted on the screen, almost nobody knows what that is. Um, it's complicated. Now, the nice thing with the W3 specification is that you end up with vendor implementation. So is the Opera driver, the Chrome driver, 
um, marionette. Opera did the very first version, and um, I remember them demoing it, and people being blown away by how fast it was. Um, a little bit later, Google released a driver for Chrome, which was slightly embarrassing. Jason Huggins and myself were working for Google. Google had their own browser. You would imagine that somehow the US megacorp would be able to figure everything out and get the first implementation out. Um, but no, Opera, Opera beat us to the punch by quite a long way. Um, so the Chrome driver came out. Uh, there is a lovely video of somebody watching it run for the first time going, holy shit. We all okay with a bit of profanity. Sorry, holy heck. Um, as it first runs. Uh, David Burns, who's been on the Selenium project for ever, um, has been sort of leading the team that is working on Marionette. Um, Andreas Colson and Jeff Bigger that are working on that for us in New Zealand have been really important in moving the spec forward and also doing an implementation. Um, so Marionette is there. Like each of the major browsers um, uh, have, have their own version. There's an edge driver as well, which I thought I had a screenshot of, but well, so the edge driver is kind of nice. Like Microsoft have got behind the project as well. Um, that's amazing, right? Like who would have thought that Microsoft would be involved in something that is originally an open source project? Um, and one of the reasons why we started with the W3C was to try and encourage people who were wary of interacting with open source to interact with us on a, on a standards level. Um, you know, because some companies have a, have a fraught relationship with open source. Um, one of those companies is Apple. Apple, I mean, look at this. I've got an iPhone. I use um, a MacBook Air as sort of my laptop of choice. Um, you know, I, I never wear a watch, but I probably wouldn't care if I had an Apple watch. Um, they make fantastic bits of kit, and they make great software, right? If you look around many developer conferences, you'll, si you'll find so many people using Apple kit, um, and it was always one of the things we wanted was there to be web driver support from Apple um, so that we could stop attempting to support, support Safari. Because Safari also turns out to be one of the hardest browsers in the world to automate. Um, they announced at the World Wide, we uh, the World Wide Developer Conference, WWDC, um, the new version of OS 10, Sierra. And in Sierra, um, if you go to user bin Safari driver, you have an implementation of WebDriver shipping with the OS. Um, what this means, and this is really big news, right? Like everyone on the team is like, yes! And everyone else is going, like my parents were going like, what? Um, what this means is that each of the major browser vendors are now supporting WebDriver as a standard. Um, we have gone from a pet project with a handful of people working on it to an international standard that has the backing of um, like, that's a huge achievement, and it's thanks to the development team, but also the users, right? The reason why we're able to go through the standardization process is because people like you are using the product day in, day out, giving us feedback, telling us the things that we need to do to improve. We've been listening, we've been improving, um, and because of the widespread adoption, that's why the browser vendors are doing it. Um, so if it hadn't been for you guys, there wouldn't be a Safari driver, there wouldn't be an Edge driver, there wouldn't be any of this. Um, you guys have pushed this project from a toy and a hobby to actually the thing that it is today. So thank you, thank you very much for that. You can clap if you want, or you don't have to. You can just sort of have a nice cup of tea. Luke has done one clap. The Zen poem. What's the sound of one one Luke clapping? What are you doing there? Which is a sign language for milk. Do you, do you need a drink? Yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry. So Selenium four. Oh crikey. So yes. Well, I mean, we are doing Selenium three. That's that's obvious. The reason why we're doing Selenium three is we've ripped out a major API. Um, it's always polite to bump a major a version number. And you do that just to let people know that there's a big change. Um, Selenium 4, there is another big change coming. Um, that is the one where we have uh, compliance with the W3C wire protocol. 
So this will be the version of WebDriver that adheres to the W3C spec. Um, it will be coming out um, shortly after the spec is complete. The spec will be complete by an Easter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, we'll probably get Selenium 4 out by, what, a Diwali or something like that. That would be appropriate, right? Okay, good. Um, so we'll, that will ship. Um, Selenium 4 is basically, yeah, the, the, the W3C version of WebDriver. Um, it should be good. But again, it also should be a drop-in replacement. Um, if you're using the WebDriver APIs, which the new legacy packages are and the new core runner is, then this will be a drop-in replacement. Unless you're running Grid. Grid will be the one place where you might need to do some thinking about bits and pieces. But the idea is that we'll be able, as we cross over from three to four, um, the last version of three and the first version of four will speak both dialects of the open source wire protocol and the W3C protocol. So you'll be able to like do a managed migration. Like you won't have to break the entire world in order to, 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 to migrate. Um, again, because we value your tests, your tests are really important to us. Having that stability is really important. So yes, Selenium 4, it's a little way off, but that's what it's going to contain. It's going to be a change in the wire protocol. <coughs> um, there is WebDriver level two for the W3C. Now, the reason why we are able to move forward with the specification of uh, WebDriver with the W3C is because we keep on saying, we're not going to do that right now. We'll look at this in the future. Um, and so level two contains a bunch of stuff that we have punted on um, and decided was too complicated. Now, we may have decided it was too complicated because the spec on which it depends hasn't actually been finalized. So shadow DOM um, falls into that category. Um, or it might be that actually it's still emerging uh, in the WebDriver and Selenium communities, and we're not quite sure what it looks like. So mobile is a really good example of that. We know that there needs to be some form of mobile testing, mo mobile-specific APIs but we haven't yet nailed down which ones are appropriate and whether there needs to be ones separately for each platform or whether there's some sort of coherent set that we can apply over everything. Um, with web browsers, we've had 10 years, 15 years of experience. We haven't had that one with mobile devices yet, so we're not quite sure what that looks like. Um, so that's gonna be level two. Again, that'll happen when it happens, um, but it's gonna be really important to allow us to ship level one, the first version of the spec, to have level two be on the way. And the final thing is, um, we don't often talk about this, but this is really important for the Selenium project. Um, we are part of a group called the Software Freedom Conservancy. Have any of you heard of the SFC? Almost none of you. Um, you might have heard of some of the projects that they do. Um, if you uh, C++ coder, there's Boost. If you run continuous build farms, you might have heard of Build Boss. Um, does anyone use source control? A surprisingly few people use source control in this room. I advise using it. Um, so uh, SFC, both Git and Mercurial are project members of the SFC. Um, Samba, if you interoperate from Unix to Windows, that's the SFC and obviously the Selenium project. What they do is they provide um, the support for doing all the legalese and dealing with any money that we have. So setting up a conference, for example, takes money. Um, we probably haven't got the skills to do that, but the SFC do. Um, they provide the backup, the admin support, enable for, in order for us to run successful open source projects. Um, and they are absolutely invaluable. Um, so without them, we wouldn't be where we are right now. They also help look after our intellectual property um, if there were ever any patent issues due to these guys that are going to talk to us and trying to improve our technical skills. Um, they are awesome, and we never give them enough praise and a shout out. So I just thought I'd give out a shout out to the Software Freedom Conservancy, um, and I hope that at least one of them makes it to the end of this video to see that. And with that, remarkably, I'm on time. Naresh, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, Thank you all very much for your time and attention. I hope you have a fantastic Selenium conference. If you have any questions, if you want to chat, um, I will be around, as will other members of the development team. Um, thank you all. Have a great conference.
yeah, Naresh is asking if I can take questions. Of course I can. Are there any questions? Okay. I've, oh, sorry, yes. Is there one? No, brilliant. Oh, there is. So, few questions. Sorry. Okay. Now, I saw that HTML unit web are spread as a separate project, mm -hmm. sub project. Mm -hmm. Any intention behind making it as a separate project? So, um, HTML unit being broken out into its own project. Um, one of the things that we really want the Selenium project to be responsible for is the Selenium interfaces and classes and the support libraries, documentation, and things like that. Um, the people who are best placed to do an implementation of those interfaces and classes are the browser vendors. So Microsoft have done implementations for Edge. Um, Mozilla have done one for Firefox. Um, uh, Apple are doing one for Safari, which is great news. Um, Opera have done one for Opera. HTML units, that project, we want the HTML unit developers to be responsible for the HTML unit driver because they know their tool best. Um, and sometimes in order to do good emulation, you need to change the underlying project, and they are the people who are in the best position to do that. So that's why we spun it out as a separate thing. Actually, that makes me to ask another question, right? <laughs> but you inbuilt the Firefox drivers into the Selenium. Yes. Right? Uh, so I, I think we find difficulty at times when Firefox upgrades uh, so we have to be waiting for the Selenium release, right? Yep. Right. So is there an intention to detach the Firefox driver? Yes. Okay. So um, there are a couple of things happening in Firefox that um, mean that it's more and more challenging for us as a Selenium project to support it. Um, the first of those is signed add-ons. So the latest Firefox release, um, you can't turn this off. There is a feature where your add-on needs to be signed to go like it's okay for this to run. Um, the developer builds a web driver aren't signed. So we have a problem there. Um, the second thing, they're working on a project called electrolysis. And electrolysis, uh, electrolysis is a sort of multi-process model for Firefox. Um, Chrome has had this for a long time, Safari has this. That's where if something brings down one site, it doesn't bring down every single tab, it just brings down that one tab. So it's process isolation running within the browser, and it turns out that some of the assumptions that the Firefox driver makes violate those. But good news, you don't need to wait for an update from the Selenium project. You don't need to use the Firefox driver. Um, uh, Marionette is the implementation of the web driver APIs that's shipped by um, Mozilla itself. Its release cadence is based on Firefox's rather than the Selenium projects. So all, all you need to do is switch to to the, um, the, the, their implementation. Um, they have wired it in so that if you use the Firefox driver and wires for some reason program in Marionette, if that's found on the path, that would be used in preference. Um, so it's really easy just to do that switch onto the official Marionette driver. Um, ultimately, what this means is that we're going to delete even more code from the Selenium project because the Firefox driver is effectively no more once Marionette is capable of doing everything we need it to do. And it's basically at that point. Does that answer the question? Good. Um, I think that's great. Uh, we do have uh, in the evening a Q&A panel with all the Selenium committers. Uh, so I would actually reserve questions which are more directed on those lines. Uh, if there's something more specific for Simon, maybe this is a good time. Uh, the project specific ones, we can take it in the evening. I have a question for you guys. Can you use Selenium Core in the new? Actually, script browser bot might work. Because we, you, I mean, you never read the JavaScript that's generated. But basically, we detect that you're using some of these really common patterns. And then we, <coughs> we have compiled versions of of lots of those and we inject them into the script so we mutate like browserbot.get title to absolutely nightmarish amount of code. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you can have it. All right, um, are we done? Brilliant, thank you very much. Have a great conference.